The Chinese balloon continues to float overhead, and now we're learning it might be there for quite some time. Today, we're going to take a look at Brigadier General Patrick Ryan Ryder. He gave us a bunch of information about what they are willing to share, including some details about this balloon, whatever this big object is floating overhead. And we're going to see what this thing looks like. We're going to go through the details. And we're going to see what the CIA director has to say about China. But first, let's take a look at the background on what is exactly happening here. From Reuters, they have an article that tells us a Chinese spy balloon flies over the United States. Okay, if you haven't seen this all over the place, of course, there's some good details here. Posted on February 3rd, summarizing all of the latest activities. Chinese spy balloon been flying over the United States for a couple of days. And a big part of the question that I have is sort of who first identified it? How long was this thing floating around? Did this get reported because of civilians or did this get reported because of the military? Right. Did the civilians report this and the military had to come out and corroborate it? Let's see. They said in what could be a brazen act, brazen act, just days before Anthony Blinken was sent to go over to China. Fighter jets were mobilized. Military leaders advised Joe Biden that shooting the balloon would cause safety. United States, quote, took custody. We're going to hear from Brigadier General Patrick Ryder about that. What does that mean? Can this craft move around? Can it go up and down? Does it carry a payload? Is it just recording instruments? What's going on? There's a lot to get to. Separately, Canada said there might be a, another one of these floating around, a high altitude surveillance balloon there as well. We see that the news initially broke as CIA director William Burns, who we're going to hear from later, was speaking at an event at Georgetown. Right, I have that clip. I went and clipped it out for us to listen to, where he called China the biggest geopolitical challenge facing the United States. Very convenient timing. The United States government has detected and is tracking a high altitude surveillance balloon, which is what Patrick Ryder said. We'll listen to more from him. But China responded, and the foreign ministry spokesperson Mao Ning said that Beijing was, quote, verifying the situation. He said, I would like to emphasize that until the facts are clarified, speculation and hype will not be helpful to the proper resolution of the issue, she told a regular daily briefing on Friday, saying that China abides by international law, says China has no intention of violating the land, territory, and airspace of any sovereign country. So we'll ask ourselves if we believe that or not. U.S. officials said that they did raise it with their Chinese counterparts, so we have communicated with them the seriousness with which we take this issue. And again, this is not a balloon you find at a birthday party. This is not a National Geographic weather balloon. This is something that is so big, they're saying it could be the size of like three bus loads, right? Three different buses kind of back to back in terms of solar paneling and different sensors that are a part of this payload that we're going to learn more about. It's so big that they don't want to just shoot it down for fear that this thing might come crashing down on somebody's house. One uh, official from the U.S. said the balloon was assessed to have limited additive value from an intelligence collection perspective, right? In other words, what they are getting from their satellites and probably from their congressmen like Bang Bang Swalwell, you know, they just say, no, I mean, we don't really need balloons. You know, we've got uh, Swalwell's just emailing us whatever we ask him for. So Blinken is expected to travel to China. Marco Rubio said this was alarming and not surprising. Tom Cotton called for Blinken to cancel his trip, and of course he did. This is an image of the object that is flying around. And as we're gonna learn, this is right overhead. So hello to our Chinese friends out there. Hope you're enjoying the show. Happy Friday to you guys too. Don't forget to like this video wherever you are. You know, and, and there's just moseying on across the whole country as we sit here today. Since then, Washington have been communicating they talk about it as a potential safety risk. They say that assets like F-22 fighter jets were mobilized. We wanted to make sure that the area was uh, being emptied out. Civilian airspace was grounded in certain locations. One of the officials said the flight path would carry the balloon over a number of sensitive sites. Well, that's a problem, isn't it? But would not give any more details. Maelstrom Air Force Base is in Montana. Has 150 intercontinental ballistic missile silos also tracking said they began tracking this over the Aleutian Islands and in Canada before entering the United States. So it just kind of came over <laughs> such balloons. They typically operate at 80,000 to 120,000 feet aircraft, right? Which is very, very high. So, you know, anybody who's saying they're going to shoot it down or something like that, it's higher than commercial airliners. Craig Singleton, China expert 
said that the balloons had been widely used previously and said that surveillance goes both ways. So interesting little details there. Now we're going to dive into this a whole lot more when we hear from Patrick Ryder coming up very, very shortly. But here is a, a video of what it looked like. So somebody recorded this, the balloon. They show us a, a, an image of the moon and then they pan over to the balloon. So this is the moon. They're going to take us over to the balloon. Here's the moon. There it is. Here's that. Very high up there, right? Even higher what than commercial airliners. That? Right? Higher than commercial airliners. So that's that's a very high up there. So you think about when you see a plane up there, right? It's very, very small. It's big. And you can see that. Now, the balloon is going to be a lot bigger than the payload. And the balloon is going to be reflecting all sorts of light off of it. So it's going to stand out, you know, maybe more than an airplane would. But it's still, it's big. It's a big object. And if you can sort of juxtapose the two things, right? You, we know what it stands like to sit on the ground and look at an airplane. And that's big. Yeah. So pretty amazing. So that's what it looks like. Now, of course, many people are asking, what the heck is going on here? Nobody trusts the government at all. Nobody trusts our DOJ or our military or anybody to tell us the truth about anything anymore. And so let's just go through some possibilities that this could be, maybe or maybe not, and ask ourselves some questions about this. China said it was just an accident, right? Which, of course, is a big LOL. Like, no, no, we were seriously studying the migration patterns of the birds uh, due to global warming or something. Okay, okay, China. Nobody believes that for a minute, but all right, it's an accident. Maybe we shouldn't go to World War uh, Four over this since we're already in World War Three. Uh, you know, but everybody's kind of just throwing that right in the garbage. Doesn't even look like a weather balloon. It's not anything that, you know, it, it, it has a justifiable basis for being in middle America. Ridiculous. Is it an actual threat, right? Is this something that the, that the military is maybe covering up? You know, maybe this does have a payload. They don't want to shoot it down because it's got something problematic in it. Right. It's carrying something. It's a bigger threat. And it's like, let's let it float over us. Right. One of these situations, like in the movies, like just keep everybody calm. Don't tell them there's a nuclear bomb strapped there to the bottom of the payload. Right. It's all good. Everybody's fine. It's just going to float right over us. You know, something like that. Could it? I don't know. Probably not. That would be nuts. Similarly, we, but we ask questions, right? It is a threat in the, in the form of the fact that this has physical debris that if they pop this thing, it's going to crash on somebody's house. Or it's going to cause damage, so they say, right? This is several busloads long. It's a big chunk of trash that the Chinese have sent over there. We get enough of it from Amazon. So it's all just floating around up there in the sky. But it's also an intelligence threat, right? I mean, they're gathering something. Well, they say, obviously, it's not that big of a deal. Whatever they're gathering from this, all of those instruments, all of this payload, it's just not enough on there to even worry about. So they don't even consider it an actual threat. They're okay with a foreign nation flying a surveillance balloon over the middle of their country. Now, I don't know about you, you know, or any of my fellow command and conquer friends out there, any real-time strategy gamers out there, you know, I know from firsthand experience, when you hear in red alert, Kirov reporting, you know, you start to sort of quiver in your boots a little bit there because you know that the Russians are sending over a big balloon that's going to nuke your base any minute and it's going to be a big problem. And so I don't, it just gives me bad vibes. I'm hearkening back to those, those moments. You got to be very careful. So, you know, similar thing happening here, regardless of what it is, isn't this one of those situations where you kind of shoot first and ask questions later? Thanks for acknowledging you made this catastrophic mistake, but we don't play those games. You don't get to just float across the top of our country. Like there's a, a super highway there for China. There's also the possibility that it could just be a non-threatening test. They want to, right? There maybe, maybe it is just a big hunk of trash up there. It's completely meaningless. They're not capturing anything. There is no surveillance, right? It doesn't have a, a, a problematic payload. But it is a problem because they're saying they want to know our response time, our reaction time. How open is America to accepting airspace incursions? They are, though, maybe the next one does have whatever they have at Wuhan Lab 2. You know, who knows? Coordination between the U.S. and Canada, right? Watching. Okay, we're going to float one over Canada. We're going to float one over the United States. Or this all could just be a big, giant, shiny object distraction. Chinese CCP surveillance, whatever it is, you know, really kind of irrelevant. They say they're not getting anything more. It could be a domestic distraction. It could be a Chinese distraction. It could be just something to get us all talking about this because Blinken was supposed to be meeting with the Chinese and they wanted to goof with him 
goof on him just like they did the last time he was down there when he got backhanded when he, when he was meeting with them wherever that was, I think in Hawaii. So who knows, all sorts of different reasons as to why this could be what it is. We don't know the details of it, but let's listen to what the Defense Department says. This is over from the DOD D speaking on behalf of the Pentagon. Brigadier General Patrick Ryan, the press secretary for the Pentagon, speaking on C-SPAN, giving an opening statement about the balloon situation. Let's listen. In regards to our announcement last night regarding the high altitude surveillance balloon, I'm not going to have much new information to provide other than to say that the North American Aerospace Defense Command continues to monitor it closely. While we won't get into specifics in regards to the exact location, I can tell you that the balloon continues to move eastward and is currently over the center of the continental United States. Great. Just floating around over Kansas. Again, we currently assess that the balloon does not present a military or physical threat to people on the ground at this time. And we'll continue to review, uh, excuse me, continue to monitor and review options. Fine. That's it. That's all. That was in his opening statement, right? Then he talked about Ukraine. He talked about missile deals and, you know, endless money for them. And so the list goes on and on. But the media had a bunch of questions and you can see we've got them all chronicled out here. We're going to go through this press conference in some detail. But one of the first questions was, all right, look, uh, this is kind of weird. Uh, we've seen those National Geographic Discovery Channel weather balloons. You know, it's like three people in a safari hat out there who just sort of launched the thing from Antarctica or whatever. That doesn't appear to be what this is, Mr. Brigadier General. Or uh, uh, Can you please explain to us what this is? Is this a weather balloon or something else? And move to your questions. We'll start with AP Tarka. Hi, Pat. Thank you for doing this. Um, China has said this is just a weather balloon that has veered off course. Why is the Pentagon convinced that this is a surveillance balloon? And then can you give us a little bit more on the status of the balloon? You said it's in the central of the uh, cent central U.S. What state? Do you have any guidance for people as they see this balloon or they're trying to photograph it or maybe try and interfere with it? Sure. Uh, thanks, Tara. Uh, so first of all, we are aware of the PRC's statement. Um, however, the fact is uh, we know that it's a surveillance balloon uh, and I'm not going to be able to be more specific than that. Uh, we do know that the balloon has violated U.S. airspace and international law, uh, which is unacceptable. And so we've conveyed uh, okay. this directly to the PRC at multiple levels. Uh, and in terms of specific locations, uh, I'm not going to be able to. Well, what was their response when you when you conveyed it that they were in violation of international and U.S. law? What did they say? Go into specific locations again, other than to say it's moving eastward at this time. Yeah, you had a follow up. Well, just a quick follow up on uh, as people start to see the balloon. Do you have any guidance for should they try not to interfere, not photograph? Uh, so the balloon is currently assessed to be at about 60,000 feet. So again, well above uh, the, the range of civilian air traffic or where civilian uh, air traffic would normally fly. Um, uh, sir and so I think she's asking a question about should people shoot at it? And that would be very high for a land-based projectile to reach. So he is sort of, I think, skipping over that question, kind of not addressing it. But I think that's kind of what she was asking without asking about it. And he is not answering that without answering it. Certainly aware that there are cameras, uh, you know, civilian owned commercial cameras that could spot this balloon um, in, in terms mm -hmm. of um, guidance to folks. Again, this is something that NORAD is closely monitoring. Uh, we do assess at this time that it does not pose a physical threat, as I mentioned, uh, to people on the ground. Uh, so we'll just leave it at that. All right. So he moves around. They talk about a bunch of other things. A great question was about the control of this, right? Who is, who is f flying this thing? Is anybody flying it? Is it just a balloon that's just kind of on its own? Does it have maneuverability like an RC controller? Here's the general. General Ryder, who is controlling this balloon right now? Uh, again, we, we know that this is a Chinese balloon, but beyond that, I'm not going to have specifics. But is it, you say that it's moving eastward and it's over the continental U.S. It's, it's not over Montana anymore. Is the Chinese government controlling the movement of the balloon or is it just floating with uh, airstreams? Thanks, Jennifer. Uh, so I'm not going to go into uh, any specific intelligence that we, we may have. Again, uh, we, we know this is a Chinese balloon um, and that it has the ability to maneuver. Um, but I'll just leave it at that. And once it's over a body of water, 
will you shoot it down? Uh, again, right now we're monitoring the situation closely, uh, reviewing options, but beyond that, I'm not going to have any additional information. Yeah, so the issue, a big issue in my mind is the maneuverability. It's, are they flying this over certain locations? Like, like what about the trajectory of this balloon, of this surveillance spy device? Was it going one place and then it got caught and then it moved around and went to a different location? Because they got caught. Uh oh, the Pentagon's got wind of this. We better go stop looking at this nuclear silo and go check out this one before they catch on, right? And, are, are, and are they going to just allow this thing to leave? Are they just going to allow it to just fly out of the country? Back over to China? <laughs> what? All right, so a big question is about maneuverability. And so we'll play this one. Because this is a great question, right? Where is it going and what are they doing with this if they can move it around? Go to Phil and then I'll come over to Custom. Is the, is the position of the balloon classified? Uh, Phil, right now, uh, what we're not going to do is get into a hour by hour location of the balloon. Again, we're monitoring it closely. Uh, I, as I mentioned right now, it's over the center of the continental United States. That's about as specific as I'm going to get. But I understand it might be inconvenient, but does the public not have a right to know? If uh, the, the public is over certainly their state? has the ability to look up in the sky and, oh, and that's see nice. where the balloon is. Can we rely on our government to give us any information about that? Or is that like way too much to ask? Uh, yeah, it is too much to ask, okay? If you want to know where this Chinese spy satellite is flying over your head, why don't you go out and buy a stinking telescope, okay? Thank you. Kasim? General, you said the uh, balloon is maneuverable. Uh, so d does that mean that it's not drifting? Uh, so the balloon is maneuverable. Um, clearly, it's, in, it's violated U.S. airspace. Uh, and again, we've communicated that fact to the PRC. Uh, if possible, can you tell us if the balloon, when it enters the, entered the U.S. airspace, has it changed its course in any way? The balloon has changed its course. Oh, uh, he did not want to answer that one. <laughs> which is, again, why we're monitoring it. Uh, but that's about as specific as I can get. Oof. Thank you. The balloon has changed its course. Listen. It is maneuverable. Um, clearly, it's, it's... So when it landed, when it, when it came in and they got wind of it, the balloon, it was going one place and it made a change. A course correction. Where did it go? In, it's violated U.S. airspace. Uh, and again, we've communicated that fact to the PRC. Uh, if possible, can you tell us if the balloon, when it enters the, entered the U.S. airspace, has it changed its course in any way? Yep. The balloon has changed its course, uh, yep. which is, again, why we're monitoring it. Uh, but that's about as specific as I can get. Thank you. All right. So I guess they can just rummage around wherever they want to go. I mean, maybe they're going to go visit. I don't know where they're going down to visit Texas. You know, uh, maybe they're going to come check out the Grand Canyon. You know, great views up there. Come over to Arizona. Come check out the Grand Canyon. You know, they can go check out some of the sights and sounds. Maybe go over to Yellowstone. You know, you know, fart around over there for a little bit before they go check out Florida. It's beautiful over there. And they're definitely also going to want to make sure they check out all the nuclear silos in addition to, you know, maybe the Pentagon, the White House. They can go look at uh, all of the other major national security infrastructure while they're just, you know, moving around over there. So it's going to be very interesting to have to live under the new Chinese control. And if you're not interested in doing that, if you want to, you know, really sort of get beefed up so we're all strong and vibrant to protect against the Chinese invasion, well, the thing that might help with that is Field of Greens, fruits and vegetables and healthy nutrition. Because as you know, you know, the pandemic's over. Some of us are a little bit soft, myself included on this. We all want to drop some of those leftover pandemic pounds. And how sick are you of all these ads for weight loss pills and fad diets and all that stuff? I mean, you've been there, you've done that, you know what works eating five healthy servings of fruits and vegetables every single day. You do that, and I bet the weight just falls right off. But, you know, vegetables, not a fan, and fruit, how much time do you have to prepare all of that every day? Solution, let's talk Field of Greens. Field of Greens is a science-backed formula of specific fruits and vegetables that you're not going to find in any other product. Proper nutrition reboots your metabolism so you burn calories faster and lose weight the healthier way. And Field of Greens is the only brand backed by a better health promise. You're going to look healthier, feel healthier, and you're going to be able to fight back invaders. But the greater proof is going to come at the next checkup when your doctor says, Man, you look great. You've lost weight. Whatever you're doing, keep it up. So let's get you started. 15%, 15% off your first order. Go visit fieldofgreens.com.
And don't forget to use code Robert to save that 15% off and get your real organic superfood from our friends at Brickhouse Nutrition, fieldofgreens.com. Feel vibrant, burst with green energy, and be healthy, my friends. All right. And so now, a great question from the media. Mr. Brigadier General, you know, there's some interesting things that this craft is doing. Can you tell us, sir, certainly, is this a threat or not? Go to Matt. Thank you, sir. So you said at this point, um, the balloon doesn't pose to have any, to pose any risks to citizens. How is it that the U.S. can assess that, given that the balloon is at such an altitude, you know, without actually getting eyes on it up close and assessing the equipment that's on board? Um, and secondly, um, are there any alternatives being considered to shooting it down? Is there any option to take this balloon out of the sky intact to maybe get a better look at that equipment? Yeah. Yeah, like nets or like a hook, or can you do like that scene from that movie where the dudes fly out of the one plane and land into the other plane? Where's Tom Cruise? Somebody call him up. So, so again, uh, this is a surveillance balloon, uh, hover, you know, operating at about 60,000 feet. Um, clearly, you know, we did a, a very close assessment in terms of, uh, what it's doing. Uh, and as I mentioned, uh, military commanders have assessed that there is no physical or military threat to people on the ground. Um, and so, uh, in that regard, we'll continue to monitor. Uh, in terms of way ahead, we will continue to review options, but I'm not going to have anything further to provide on that. So thank you. Yeah, there's all sorts of other solutions to this. Tom Cruise, Harrison Ford could solve this thing. Even Balloon Boy, whatever happened to that kid? Remember they lost him up there in the sky or attic or something like that? Somebody can fix this thing. I don't know what's so complicated about it. I mean, Tom Cruise could, I think, probably solve this thing in like 90 minutes at least. So what we have more uh, coming out next is more clips from Brigadier General Patrick Ryder. And this was the one that really kind of stood out to me that this is going to be over the United States for days, all right? For days. They're just going to let this thing float around out there for days doing whatever it is it's doing. I don't care what it's doing. Do, do you? Um, I was wondering, is there any way that the Pentagon is able to gauge how long it could potentially loiter, um, you know, comparing to balloons that have been in the past um, and you know how long do you anticipate that it, it could loiter sure it kind of depends what they're looking for you know we don't really know how long they're going to stay or they you know what, what their schedule looks like how much sightseeing is going to happen yeah so so as I mentioned we'll continue to monitor it uh, right now we assess that it'll probably be over the United States for a few few days um, but we'll continue to monitor review our options and keep you updated as as we can it sounds to me like they're going to let this thing go. It's just going to float out of here. <laughs> they're just going to let it float over, I guess, into the Atlantic or into the Gulf of Mexico or somewhere. What? It's just up there. Well, I don't know. It depends on them. He should act like Corrine Jean-Pierre and just say, I don't know. Why don't you talk to the Chinese council? I got to refer you to Chinese council on that one. All right. Just uh, Hunter Biden has their number. Call him. Thank you. Okay, let me go to Nancy here. Hi, General. I want to go back to a couple of things you said. You, you said several times that the U.S. is reviewing its options. I'd like to some clarity. Is the option of shooting down the balloon, particularly as it's going over more populated areas, off the table? Is that still amongst the options that, that the U.S. military is considering? And if so, under what conditions would it do so? Yeah, thanks, Nancy. So so at this stage, uh, what I can tell you is, again, um, we're reviewing options. I'm not I'm not going to go into more specifics than that. Uh, and when and if there's any updates to provide, we'll let you know. It's been ruled out. Shooting. Uh, again, we're, we're monitoring it and we're reviewing options. No, just leave it there. And then a senior defense official yesterday said that um, similar incidents had happened under the previous administration. And yet some of those administration officials have come forward and said they're not familiar with it. Is there any way you could give us more details on when it's happened over, whether it was over the continental U.S. or over U.S. territories, is that something you could potentially take to provide the public more details about the extent yes. of these things? Great question. Great question. Has this happened before? Trump people said that this has not happened before. So if you say that it did happen before and Trump people says that it did not happen before, which one is it? Right. And now we have to ask ourselves about what, you know, what's the definition of happened, right? 
in Trump's case, did the balloons sort of come along the coast and come close to the border? Did they cross over the corner of the border, you know, fly over, let's say, you know, Washington state or over the panhandle of Florida or something like that? You know, little incidental incursions. And this is like the first big incursion. Or, or did the military know about these potential incursions and not tell the Trump people, knowing that the Trump people would do something you know, weird about it? Or are the Trump people lying? Or is the military lying? Things happen. So what I would tell you right now is um, that information is classified. Uh, I'm not able to provide it other than um, I can mm. confirm that there have been. Okay, if it's classified, then they should probably just go check Joe Biden's house. They're probably in a drawer somewhere or underneath the couch cushion. And other... Uh, incidents where balloons did come close to or cross over U.S. territory. And then I just want to reiterate something that Phil um, said earlier, that given that it's not classified and the public can see it, I just ask that you take the question that we have more specifics on where it is, given that there's no clear security reason by, by your own estimation in terms of keeping that information from the public. Sure. Thank yeah, you. absolutely. And, and again, um, you know, we're just not going to get into an hour by hour where the balloon is. So we will do our best to keep you and the public informed in general terms on where the balloon is uh, and, and, you know, try to be helpful in that regard. That, if you're not confirming photos, yeah. we're in a guessing game where people think it's flying over. I just think yeah. some fidelity would be in everybody. Understood. And, and again, I think a key point here to make uh, and, and to purposefully belabor the point, which is that, again, as this balloon traverses the continent of the United mm -hmm. States, we assess that it currently does not pose a physical or military risk to people on the ground. So we will continue to monitor, we'll continue to review our options uh, and provide information and updates as we're able to. So Weird that they don't even want to tell you exactly where it is. What if it's maneuvering around? Little Chinese spy balloons over our heads right now, man. It's weird. Floating all over the place. But he says, we don't want to play that game with you guys, right? They're not going to do like a Santa tracker. They'd rather track Santa than a Chinese spy balloon. And if they play this game where it's here, it's here, it's here, they know it's probably just going to you know, rally a bunch of people up, rile a bunch of people up. And so they don't want to do that. But the media is saying, well, people are going to do that anyways. They're going to be out there with telescopes and binoculars trying to figure out where this thing is. So maybe you should be a little bit more transparent with this one too. Jennifer. It approaches Washington, D.C. Will you shoot it down? Again, Jennifer, we're reviewing options, but I'm not going to get into hypotheticals or, or speculate on potential future actions. So let me go to the back of the room here, and then I'll come up to Joe. Thank you, Janil. Um, thinking about the you know, route of the balloon, uh, was it impossible for the DOD to deal with the balloon before uh, it reached to the you know, uh, airspace of the United States? Yeah, yeah great question there. You guys are very competent in the DOD and the Pentagon. You've got all of these infrastructure, radar, and you know, uh, uh, squadrons that you just, boom, oh, they're flying all over the place, and you're protecting the homeland. I mean, we spend, what, like a, like a, a trillion bucks every year for it or whatever it is to, for the whole military apparatus, right? It's a big, big bill. Why didn't you guys stop this weird balloon from flying across our airspace? Yeah, so uh, we've been monitoring the balloon. Um, and we let know, it float we, in. We, we are aware. Um, again, as I mentioned, it uh, is a maneuverable craft, um, and, and we continue to assess and make uh, appropriate decisions uh, based on, on how we're going to address you know, what we perceive as a potential threat or not. So it kind of sounds like they saw it coming in, and they let it come in, too, right? We've been monitoring it. We saw it. We read the article that apparently was coming through the Aleutian Islands up there near Alaska. So they just let it waltz on in here? The safety and security of the American people is paramount. Uh, and so, again, uh, at this time, we assess that it does not pose a physical threat to people on the ground. Uh, we'll continue to monitor it and we'll continue to review options. Thank you. Let me go ahead and go to Joe here and then we'll come back to this side of the room. So you said so, that this is... <laughs> she doesn't. So what you're saying is... Uh, we'll continue to monitor it and we'll continue to review options. Thank you. Let me go ahead and go to Joe here and then we'll come back to this side of the room. So you said that this is the first time we've, uh, this isn't the first time we've seen a balloon fly over the continental U.S. In the past, has it flown over other sensitive areas such as military bases? You've only, 
You haven't been very specific. It's just the continental U.S. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. I haven't been very specific because that information is classified, and I'm just not going to be able to talk about it. So thank you. Idris. Thank you. Um, the Canadian Defence Ministry yesterday said they were tracking a second potential uh, spy balloon. Do you, are, you, are you tracking a second potential incident? And when the balloon was coming, I, I guess what I'm confused about is, when were there discussions to shoot down the balloon? Were there any discussions about shooting down the balloon when it was not over the United States, when it was potentially over international waters? Or were the discussions only when it entered U.S. airspace? Yeah, thanks, Idris. So on your first question, um, we, we are tracking one balloon. Uh, so in regards to statements by Canada, I'd, I'd refer you back to them on that. Um, in terms of uh, the discussions about whether or not to shoot down this balloon, um, that was... Uh, an option, right? And so that was something uh, that was taken into consideration. Uh, again, because we assess that currently it does not pose a physical uh, or military risk to people on the ground, uh, for now we're continuing to monitor and review options. I don't really know what that means exactly. It doesn't pose a military or civilian threat to people on the ground. I understand the physicality of that, but he's not saying over and over that this is not a threat, right? It's like it's. it's he, he, He's not he's not coming out and openly saying this is something to not worry about, right? This is this is meaningless. This is not anything of concern. He's just saying it's not a threat, that's why we decided not to shoot it down. So there is there's something wrong, right, with this. We don't know exactly what it is. Are they going to let it just float on through here? Something is very strange. Thank you. I'll we'll go back to Ellie and then we'll come up here. Thank you. Um how big is the balloon that you're tracking and is it have you guys picked up, is it leaving anything in its wake, like sensors? Yeah, so uh, so on your latter uh, question, I'm not, I'm not going to get into intelligence. Mm -hmm. um, we, we do continue to monitor the balloon. We do know that it is a surveillance balloon. Um, in terms of the size, I'm, I'm not able to get into the specifics other than to say uh, that it is big enough uh, that, again, uh, in reviewing uh, our approach, we do recognize that uh, any potential debris field would be significant wow. uh, and potentially cause civilian uh, injuries or deaths. Isn't that a threat right there? Like China's flying, whatever you think it is, whether you think it's a threat or not, it's a big chunk of trash metal heap regardless, right? Even reduce it down to the, the, the most benign thing. It's a big ball of helium with a bunch of metal. So big that it has the threat of killing American citizens in the homeland, in domestic America, according to our own military. And they're just going to let this thing float on out of there? Uh, or significant property damage. So again, this is part of the calculus in terms of our overall assessment. Uh, but again, we'll continue to monitor it. We'll continue to review our options uh, and keep you updated as able. Let me go here and then over here. Uh, thank you, following up on the balloon question. Uh, during your conversation with the Chinese, uh, have they indicated to you what is inside the balloon to prove the point that it's a not a, it's a civilian balloon or weather monitoring thing and does that assessment differs from your assessment of what is inside the balloon what is trying to do and secondly on the on the india question this great first question the chinese said this this was just a weather balloon like do they have thermometers on there did they did they point you to the big fat thermometer on there or is there a manual on there that talks about cumulonimbus clouds or something no so did they give you anything to verify their claim? This week, uh, India and U.S. launched an uh, initiative on critical emerging technologies. Uh, this has a, quite a bit of defense uh, component in it. Can you give us some more details about it and how it's going to strengthen, uh, build up your relationship with India? Sure. Okay, so also talks about India, but there's another point to this that I thought is also very interesting. You know, we don't actually know, and I would honestly say that the military, who knows whether they know about what other technologies are on that thing. I mean, because if you remember, and you know, I, again, it's always hard to trust anything the military tells us or what the news tells us if you presume that most of them are all compromised by the same operators. But there was a story about the Chinese releasing the hypersonic missile or satellite or something like that, and it caught the military, U.S. military off uh by surprise, it just captured their attention. They thought there was no way they were this close to developing that type of technology. They thought they were 10 years down the road, right? And you're seeing a lot of other really rapid advances in China and they're regularly 
challenging and threatening, you know, sort of computer supremacy for computing power. And so who knows what's on this thing? They're presuming that it's not a threat, but they don't really know. And as it's moseying around doing a little, you know, vacation sightseeing tour of military bases, maybe that's not a risk they should take. Um, on your second question, I'll have to take that because I, I just don't have that information in front of me. Uh, on the first question, uh, I appreciate it. Um, as I mentioned, we have contacted the PRC. I'm not going to get into uh, their reaction. I'd, I'd refer you uh, to them for that. But we have clearly communicated uh, that this balloon is violating U.S. airspace and international law and that this is unacceptable. And what did Thank they you. say? Are they going to fly it out of here? Go over here. And you're going to let them? Thank you, sir. Is the uh, Pentagon looking at any uh, possibility of maybe altering the course of the balloon to uh, take it to a location where they could shoot it down in a rural area? Uh, again, monitoring, we're reviewing options, but I'm not going to go into any further specifics. Thank you, sir. Thank you, General. Uh, considering that this is a surveillance balloon, as you said, uh, does it have ability to collect very sensitive data, given that it flies over nuclear sites uh, in the state of Montana? Yeah, so again, I'm not going to get into intelligence. Um, it, you know, as we mentioned in our statement last night, once the balloon was detected, uh, we acted immediately to protect against the collection of sensitive information, uh, and I'll just leave it at that. Thank you. Phil? Is there any possibility that there's any nuclear or radioactive material aboard the balloon, or is there anything that's aboard the balloon that, that makes you believe that, that it could pose a risk if it were shot down? Uh, I, I, short answer is no, um, but again, right now we do not assess that, that the, the balloon in its current configuration at approximately 60,000 feet poses a physical or military threat to people on the ground. Yeah, it's interesting because you could even also think that it could be powered, right? It may not contain like a nuclear weapon, but it could contain, you know, it could contain like a nuclear powered device, right? So basically something they would put on a satellite that they send out into space that, you know, a small electric electrical generating nuclear generator thing that even if you drop, they might turn into a dirty bomb or something like that. So he said, no, doesn't sound like there's any other, you know, bio weapons or anything like that on there, which is all of course, very good news. But then of course the question is, well, why are they just allowing it to fly all over the place? Why don't they just shoot it down? Or like the reporter asked, why don't they just sort of corral this thing and drag it out into an open field and then shoot it down or drag it out over, you know, uh, you know, the Great Lakes and then shoot it down over there or capture it. Right. So that they could see what it's doing. Or maybe that's what they are trying to do is wait to see where the Chinese fly it to next. And maybe they want to go check out this silo and we'll go. Oh, that's what they're looking for. Great. And they're choreographing what they're searching for. Or maybe they can. Intercept the signals that this thing is sending back to China and they're trying to gather more intelligence about who's communicating with it so that they can go backtrace it to President Xi sitting around with Kim Jong-un somewhere. You know, who, who knows? But it is interesting they're allowing it to just continue to fly all over the place. We've got more questions that came in from the media. They're asking about the photographs. We've seen a lot of the photographs and the videos. People are recording these on their cell phones and other things. And so the media asks, well, what about the photos? I mean, can you confirm at least that what we're seeing is real? On the, uh, on the, on the balloon, can you confirm the photos that are out there that this is not the man in the moon and that is the actual balloon? Uh, thanks, Tony. So uh, certainly aware of photos being posted online. Uh, I, I'm not going to get into the business of confirming uh, whether or not those are, you know, where those photos come from. Again, I can tell you that the U.S. government, NORAD, is monitoring this closely uh, and we will continue to review. Options. How close was the U.S. to ordering, a, was the president to ordering a shoot down of the balloon? Yeah, so again, I'm not going to get into uh, discussions, internal discussions within the White House again. Uh, right now, we assess that there is no threat, a physical threat or military threat to people on the ground. So, OK, but what about like military intelligence? Is there a threat to that? Because that might justify the removal unless there's some reason we can't remove it. We're continuing to monitor, um, you know, then we'll just leave it at that. Thank All right. So that's that one. Here is another direct question. All right. Look, can we just ask you this, Mr. Brigadier General? Very, very simple, very direct question. Why not just shoot this thing down? Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Pat. Uh, you said that this is uh, violating our airspace, so why not take it down? Great question. Yeah, so, uh, you know, clearly as we assess options, 
um, and considering <coughs> the, the size of the payload on this, uh, looking at... Uh-oh, did you hear that word? Payload? The size of the payload? That's going to come back to bite him. The media does not like that word. They're going to ask him a bunch of follow-ups. Let's listen to it one more time. Clearly, as we assess options um, and considering <coughs> the, the size of the payload on this, uh -oh. uh, looking at the potential for debris uh, and the impact on civilians on the ground or property damage, again, uh, running through the, the various factors and looking at uh, in terms of does it pose a potential risk uh, to people while in the air. And right now, as I mentioned, we, we assess that it does not pose a risk to people on the ground as it currently is traversing the continental United States. And so out of an abundance of caution, uh, cognizant of the potential impact to civilians on the ground uh, from a debris field, uh, right now we're gonna continue to monitor and review options. And if I may, you mentioned that we've seen this kind of activity before. So why are we sharing this one and, and why last night, if you were following it for a few days. Is this some sort of sign uh, that we should take from China ahead of Blinken's visit or from the activity that we had in the Philippines? So she's asking him a question that makes it sound like they, you know, they knew about this for a few days ago, but the military just came out and decided to let us know about this. Maybe because it was interfering with actual airspace and they couldn't hide it anymore. Maybe because it was on the heels of this trip from Blinken over to China. Could be a whole slew of other reasons. We don't know. Uh, yeah. So in terms of any, uh, you know, hypotheticals about messaging from PRC, I, I'd refer you to them on that front. To the PRC council? Uh. Again, I think what makes this difference, different is uh, the duration and the length of, of which it has been over uh, U.S. territory. But beyond that, I'm not going to be able to go into any more specifics. Couple questions there about why not just shoot it down. We have a few more and they're very unhappy about that payload word. So we're gonna come back and talk about that. But of course, we, we did have that trip from Blinken over to China and NBC News told us this earlier. They say that Blinken, on the heels of this, postpones the high stakes Beijing trip after the spy balloon is spotted over the United States. Secretary of State on Friday postponed a trip to Beijing after a suspected Chinese spy balloon was spotted over the United States, a senior State Department official said, said, we've concluded that the conditions are not right at the moment for Blinken to travel to China. They said the U.S. is committed to maintaining open lines at all times, including during this incident, the official said, said that he is still planning to make a trip at the earliest convenience. Major issues already beset the upcoming trip before they try to spy on us with this balloon. Chinese foreign ministry said the airship is from China, but it's a civilian airship used for research, mainly meteorolog meteorological purposes, they said on their website. They said that the Chinese side, according to NBC, the Chinese said the Chinese side regrets the unintended entry of the airship into the U.S. airspace due to force majeure, right? Like circumstances outside of our control. It added that China would keep communicating with the U.S. to, quote, properly handle this unexpected situation, right? The ministry said the balloon, quote, deviated far from its planned course because of strong winds and lack of a steering ability. They say it's been spotted in Billings, Montana, 6,000 miles away from China. Later on Friday, the Pentagon spokesman, Pat uh, Ryder, who we're going to listen to again, came out. On Thursday, the Canadian Department of National Defense said that they were also actively tracking their own balloon, but didn't provide any more details other than saying that they were safe as well. So there's questions about this, of course, about the discussions with China and the difference between the Chinese satellites and the difference between the Chinese balloons. So let's start with that one. Question from the media to the general. Uh, sir, the Chinese have pretty sophisticated technology. They've got satellites up there. I mean, why do they need weather balloons? Why don't they just get what they need from Eric Swalwell or the satellites? Mike. <coughs> uh, thanks, Pat. Um, yesterday, a senior defense official said that the intelligence gathering capability of this balloon would be no better than any uh, Chinese satellite in low Earth orbit. If that's the case, why would Beijing go through the trouble and expense to send this balloon on such a, a journey? Yeah, I'd have to refer you back to their the council. PRC on that. The opinion why? PRC Again, look, we're, we're monitoring this. Uh, as I mentioned, it's violated. 
uh, U.S. airspace. It's violated international law. We've communicated that uh, back to uh, the government of China. Um, but again, I'd refer you back to China in terms of... Uh, of but I assume that, yeah. you're, that, that the Pentagon is trying to figure this out itself, why, why they're bothering to do this if they can already, if it's offering no better intelligence gathering than from a, uh, a satellite, right? Yeah, again, I mean, that, that's a statement, not a question, so... Uh, okay, yep. put a question mark at the end of it then. Yeah, again... I'm put not, a question mark at the end of it, he said. I'm not going to have anything other to provide. So. Okay, well, if I do that, I'm not going to have anything else to provide to you about this. It's a very interesting question. So if that is true, like something's, something can't be true. Like all of these things are not true. It's not just a weather satellite. It's not, it's not just an accident 6,000 miles away. You know, it doesn't have steering ability, but China said it doesn't, right? None of it makes sense. Another question goes over to Ryder. Sir, how is this impacting your discussions with China? We know that Blinken was just about to go over there and they're asking him about the diplomacy now. There we go, and then I'll come back over here. Oh, okay, thank you very much. Uh, two questions on the Chinese balloon. So there is a speculation that Chinese balloon flew over Japanese airspace before reaching the U.S. continental U.S. Wow, so it flew over Japan before getting to the United States. So now the Japanese are going to be unhappy too. Can you confirm that? Um, I've seen those press reports. Again, uh, as we acknowledged in our statement uh, that we posted last night, we have seen uh, this type of balloon activity elsewhere uh, before. But again, uh, I'm not going to get into intelligence uh, and I'm not going to have any further information to provide. Uh, secondly, uh, how will this incident affect the Secretary's future engagement with Chinese counterpart to maintain the open lines of the communication? Uh, I think we've been very clear that we're always open to maintaining an open line of communication uh, with uh, the PRC. Uh, and in that regard, nothing has changed. Thank you. Let me go. Very little new information there other than it looks like, you know, we're, we're trying to sort of now gauge where this thing came from. Did it, did, was it constructed in China and then float its way over to the United States? Or was this thing transported and built in the United States and then erected from within the United States, right? Which might even be scarier, who knows? But it obviously is gonna cause some diplomatic tension and we'll see what Blinken does. Now, as I mentioned, we put a pin in that word earlier about payload. He said, well, you know, this balloon has a payload that's not that big of a deal. And so you're sitting there, right? Anybody who is sort of like, you know, connected with the military, they probably are, oh, well, payload is anything that is, it's carrying. And so maybe he's using sort of a military phrase for, you know, like cargo. Maybe he's saying maybe the cargo, although even cargo is like, well, what kind of cargo is in there? So here's what he, he said, the word payload, and the media didn't like that at all. And so they were asking him multiple questions on his way out about payload. Sir, you said the balloon has a payload? Can you please tell us what that means exactly? Time for just a couple more, Oren. Two questions on the balloon. First, on maneuverability. <laughs> Can it maneuver up and down as well as laterally? In other words, turn as well as change altitude. And, and in terms of tracking, how are you tracking this? Is it radar? Is it aircraft? And is it continuous tracking or is it more intermittent than that? Yeah, thanks, Oren. So uh, beyond saying that we are continuously tracking uh, the balloon, I'm not going to go into the specifics in terms of how uh, we track other than to say that we have multiple means at our disposal to do that. Uh, in terms of more specifics on the balloon, uh, again, I'm not going to get into intelligence again, other than <coughs> it is maneuverable. Uh, and I'll just leave it at that. All right. Two, two more questions, Phil, and then Kasim. The Chinese, you said it changed course. Did it change course following your disclosure of uh, its presence over the United States? And secondly, is the when, you know, to, to the to the point about its capabilities, um, you know, how, how does how is it powered? How is it moving? Um, uh, how, how does it how, how is it maneuverable? Yeah, thanks, Phil. So again, uh, on your latter question, I'm not I'm not going to get into intelligence. Uh, clearly, it's a balloon that has a payload underneath it. What uh, does that mean? So, uh, you know, I'll just leave it at that. Um, it, payloads, what's that? What, what do you mean by payload? Question was, what do you mean by payload? Uh, it's got a large payload underneath the surveillance component underneath the actual balloon piece of it. Um, so just leave it at that. Um, and That's, then in no, terms no. of the, um, the, the maneuverability, uh, again, all I can say right now is at this point, again, it's moving eastward, 
across the United States, currently over about uh, the central United States. Did they change course after your disclosure or did change others beyond them? I, I, I don't have that information. Yep. Clarify payload. That sounds like munitions or something that would pose a threat to. No, US again, citizens. there there is a it, it is a surveillance balloon, right? So there is a there is a. She said her question was, "It sounds like payload means like munitions. Like, is that what you're talking about?" I, I, I don't have that information. Yep. Clarify payload. That sounds like munitions or something that would pose a threat to. No, US again, citizens. there there is a it, it is a surveillance balloon, right? So there is a there is a video. There it goes. You look at a blimp. A blimp has a basket, right? So there's a basket underneath it in layman's terms. With what? So again, large enough What's it carry? to be concerning. Uh, if there were a debris field. So, all right, Kasim, last question. Has there been any mill-to-mill -mill, uh, communication with China with respect to the balloon? Again, we've, we've communicated at multiple levels, and I'll just leave it at that. Okay. Sorry, yep. said, is it arm? What, is it munitions? It is a surveillance balloon. Yeah. Again. So he, they do not like that payload word. So uh, one more time, Pat, I just got to be clear. Is it arms? Is it, what is it? Sorry, Pat, I don't yep. said, but is it arm? What, is it munitions? It is a surveillance balloon. Yeah. Again, does not pose, we currently assess it does not pose a physical or military risk to people on the ground. Okay, Why? what could payload that, is it an engine? I'm, I'm just, I'm Again, trying to... I can't go into more details. So, okay, thank you very much, everybody. Appreciate it. All right, so there's a payload on the balloon. It's a surveillance payload, whatever the heck that means. He doesn't want to tell us too much about it. But we turn our attention now over to the CIA director. His name is William J. Burns. And very interestingly, he was also giving a speech at Georgetown yesterday, and he's kind of a dry fellow to listen to. But the question was about China and the idea of, of, of what, you know, what is China doing? And you may have heard of things like the Belt and Road Initiative, where China is trying to sort of expand its industry and buy mines and provide technology and infrastructure to different parts around the world. Like one example would be Huawei, which, you know, was trying to install 5G in various different countries around the world until they realize, oh, you're just a bunch of Chinese hackers and we don't want that. And so this is theoretically one facet of a multi-pronged effort by the Chinese to probe various parts of the world. This is the CIA director explaining. I think, you know, it's fashionable sometimes to think about, oh, we all need an American national security policy to pivot to major power competition, China and Russia. And the truth is that a you know a lot of the global competition with china is going to take place in parts of the world mm -hmm. like africa the middle east or south asia our ability both as an intelligence agency but also the wider u.s government to navigate those parts of the world better than our chinese counterparts is absolutely critical so we want to build on the habits of cooperation we've built up at cia over the last two decades on counterterrorism issues mm. Uh, to try to compete more effectively as well, but also to highlight for policymakers the underlying challenges, which are going to have an enormous impact on the rest of the world. Because anybody who thinks that, you know, the challenges that we were just talking about are going to stay contained in Africa wasn't paying attention when, you know, watched the migration challenge that Europeans faced a few years ago as well. So it's it's a really important part of our job to stay focused, even as we shift Resources and, uh, resources and attention to China and Russia to stay focused on, on that set of issues as well. You know, terrorist threats have not gone away. All right, so uh, a little bit there on how he's thinking about China and he's sort of thinking about it as uh, something that is trying to extend into other theaters around the world. And the United States also has to play in those theaters in order to counterbalance China. So that's the CIA director, not a whole lot new out of there. We also ask ourselves about the president. You know, the president, who is the commander in chief, the commander in chief, the person who's supposed to stand up strong against America's adversaries and say, these are the boundaries that we have. And you're not supposed to cross these boundaries or else that guy. Well, he didn't want to talk about it today. Joe Biden was out giving a speech. Somebody asked him about the Chinese balloon that is surveilling America, going to be loitering up there for several days. But Joe Biden didn't want to talk about that one. And exited the door as usual. And so this is what it's all about. So I'm heading off to Philadelphia and uh, 
If you want to ask me a question about the economy, but I'm not going to answer any question about anything else because you never will cover this. Mr. President, taking blame for inflation? No. Why not? Because it was already there when I got here, man. Remember what the economy was like when I got here? Jobs were hemorrhaging. Inflation was rising. We weren't manufacturing a damn thing here. We were in real economic difficulty. That's why I don't. Thank you. Mr. President, when and how will you remain with Berlin? When and how will you remain with Berlin, Mr. President? Nothing there. So, come on, man. He's not responsible for inflation. Everybody else is. It's not his trillions of dollars that he signs into law. Not at all. And if he was expected to take any questions, well, he would only take one that he wanted on the economy. No questions about the balloon or the Chinese incursion into the United States, because apparently our commander in chief is not well suited for commentary on that either. Of course, we'll continue to cover. We'll see how long this Chinese balloon is floating around up there. Hopefully you follow us as we continue to do. Thank you for liking this video, wherever it is you're watching it. Thank you for subscribing. And we look forward to seeing you on the next one.